Hi, I'm Mike Massaro, and welcome as ESPN Classic presents the 1960 middleweight championship fight between Sugar Ray Robinson and Gene Fulmer, the third meeting between these two boxing greats. During his career, Sugar Ray Robinson had plenty of classic rivalries, perhaps the most famous being his six-fight epic against Jake LaMotta. But Robinson's four pitched battles against Fulmer were among the great fights in middleweight history. They first met on January 2nd, 1957, with Robinson, 10 years Fulmer's senior, holding the middleweight belt. The challenger dominated the fight with his aggressive style, knocking down Robinson in the seventh round and eventually won a 15-round decision. The two fought again four months later with a vastly different result. Robinson regained the title for the fourth time with a decisive fifth-round knockout of Fulmer. I, I went under the premise that it was better for me to make him worry about what I was doing to him than what he was doing to me. So I put a lot more pressure on him than a normal guy would put on him. And uh, that made him worry more about what I was doing than what he was doing. There was no weakness, really. I mean, he was, he was strong all the way. He was very knowledgeable, and he, and he hit hard, and he hit accurate. If I would keep right on him and make, take away that movement, then uh, it'd be my advantage and not his. Their third bout was Robinson's 163rd in a career that spanned 25 years. Coming up, Al Bernstein will give us his perspective on this classic rivalry in his continuing series, Bernstein on Boxing. But we now present the 1960 middleweight championship fight between Sugar Ray Robinson and Gene Fulmer on ESPN Classic. the fight of the week. I'm Don Dunphy, your ringside commentator. Tonight, the long-awaited NBA middleweight title bout between champion Gene Fulmer of West Jordan, Utah, and challenger Sugar Ray Robinson of New York City. The bout is the rubber match between the two, Fulmer taking the title from Robinson on decision in January of 1957, and Robinson winning it back by a fifth-round knockout in May of that year. Sugar Ray Robinson is one of the great fighters of all time. In a total of 154 fights, he has won 143, 93 of them by knockouts and 50 by decision. He was outpointed seven times, for two draws, and one no decision. His lone loss by a knockout came when he tried to take the light heavy crown from Joey Maxim and collapsed from the heat at the end of the 13th round. Robinson was born May 3rd, 1921, is 5 feet 11 inches tall. His ring career spans 20 years. Champion Gene Fulmer has a fine record. His only loss in the last five and a half years was the KO by Robinson. In 57 fights, Gene has won 52, 29 by decision, and 23 by knockout. He has lost three by decision and fought one draw. Fulmer was born July 31st, 1931, is 10 years younger than Robinson. He's 5 feet 10. At the weigh-in, supervised by Clayton Fry, Secretary of the California Commission, Fulmer weighed 159, Robinson 158 and three quarters. In just a few minutes, the 15-round middleweight championship bout between Gene Fulmer and Sugar Ray Robinson will get underway. All right, boxing fans, here we go into the main event, feature attraction, 15 rounds of boxing for the middleweight championship of the world. Presenting to you the officials appointed by the California Athletic Commission, judging at ringside, former great boxer George Latka. Other judge at ringside, popular Lee Grossman. A regular timekeeper at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Jack Smith. Two ringside physicians in attendance, Dr. Robert Rock and Dr. Jack Usain. Your referee for this middleweight championship bout will give instructions after the introductions, introducing Tommy Hart. Now presenting to you on my left, out of the white corner, from New York City, New York, wearing white trunks with a black stripe, at 158 and three quarter pounds, in the role of the challenger this evening, the former middleweight passing champion of the world, West Jordan, Utah, also wearing white trunks, black stripes. One hundred and fifty-nine pounds, the middleweight boxing champion of the world, Gene Fulmer. Now 
Now the instructions, referee Tommy Hart. All right, boys, and as much as we've covered the rules and the dressing rules, I won't belabor the point here. The only thing that I do want to point out and to bring back to your minds and refresh you is that I want a clean break on my oral command. When I say break, each of you step back without holding. Is that understood? Mm -hmm. All right. This is the world championship, so let's fight like it. Shake hands now and good luck to both of them. Scoring here is on the simplified five system. The winner of the round gets anywhere from one to five points. The loser gets nothing. Even rounds are marked by X's. Scoring by two judges and a referee. The bell for round one, 15 rounds. The Los Angeles Sports Arena. Both boys wearing white trunks. Robinson, the taller of the two. And that's the way Fulmer likes to fight, in close. He realizes that he can't give Robinson punching range and will try to smother his punches. He's going to rush him all night that way. And the crowd is getting on Fulmer for that. Robinson with his beautiful combinations needs wide punching range. The gloves look white, actually they're orange. Robinson figures about is that he's a matador stabbing the bull, the bull being Fulmer. There is no automatic eight count on a knockdown, and there is no three knockdown rule at any time in California. Robinson has height and reach going for him, and Fulmer has youth. the left eye. I wouldn't think the blood would go in the eye, though. One minute to go on round one. by playing up his left hook and that probably Robinson would come at him with right hands. He just threw a good one a moment ago. Ten seconds to go in round one. And there's the bell. And in a... And a Ring. There's the bell for round two. When Fulmer won in New York, they wore eight-ounce gloves. When Robinson knocked him out in Chicago, they wore six. Robinson is picking his spot. try to get him mad so he'll trade with him. Fulmer's best punching power is to, to the body, by the way. He's never been a good headhunter. Robinson can land them anywhere and good. left in this round. Scheduled for 15 at the Los Angeles Sports Arena.
is awkwardly clever to uh, use the term of Robinson. The crowd is getting on him. He's not a picture fighter, but nobody ever beats him. Because Robinson's the classic fighter. Probably wondering himself if he can roll back the years. About 20 seconds remaining in round two. Robinson seems to have a cut on his left eyebrow. Now they've both been cut around the left eye. Fulmers is not showing in this round. There's the bell. The warning whistle has sounded for round number three here on the Los Angeles Sports Arena. The NBA middleweight title on the line, the bell. Little to choose between them so far. You'll notice that Fulmer is keeping his head, his hands up high. He's willing to take the body punches to protect the head. Robinson has not opened up with a combination yet. He is famous for his combination punches, left and right. almost half over. You'll notice that Fulmer is going to punish that body all he can. He's got 10 years going for him. Robinson has to look for the opening. and you'll see a real close-up with our Vidicon camera. Being used for the first time on a prize fight. One minute to go in round three. This. Each one knows how the other is going to fight. Question is not to make a mistake. A good bolo by Robinson. And Fulmer is in there with some lusty belts to the midsection. Ten seconds to go in round three. Robinson on the left, Fulmer on the right, Fulmer the NBA middleweight champion, Robinson challenging. Both boys wearing white trunks, which is an unusual thing. Now that body punishment is calculated to do the ex-champion Robinson no good.
action is speeding up, as you probably noticed. keeping those clubs up in front of his face. Just about a minute left in round four. After losing the first fight to Gene Fulmer, there were questions about whether the aging Ray Robinson was near the end of his career. However, he dispelled all doubts with a decisive win over Fulmer in their second fight. Ironically, after that bout, many believed that Fulmer too had peaked and his career was fading. With more on one of boxing's great rivalries, here's Al Bernstein with his continuing series, Bernstein on Boxing. Sugar Ray Robinson and Gene Fulmer couldn't have been more different. Robinson was an urbanite from Detroit who became the toast of Harlem and inside the ring often made boxing seem like an art form. Fulmer is a Mormon from Ogden, Utah who used a great work ethic and brute strength to become a world champion but always continued to call Utah his home. Their different worlds collided in the ring four times from 1957 to 1961. A world title was always on the line and the bout that resulted was always scintillating. The series included a devastating knockout, two decision wins, and a draw, a potpourri of everything that can happen in a boxing ring. Fulmer, 10 years younger than Robinson, took the series 2-1-1. One, one. Many Robinson boosters often point out that Fulmer met Robinson when he was 36 to 41 years old in the series. They claim a younger Robinson would have done better against Fulmer. There is probably truth in that, but to suggest that is the only reason Fulmer had success does him an injustice. He was a true champion. Like Jake LaMotta, Carmen Basilio, and Bobo Olsen before him, Gene Fulmer was one of several middleweights who got to share Stenner's stage with the great Sugar Ray in a memorable series of fights. For ESPN Classic, I'm Al Bernstein. Three months after their third fight, the two fought for the fourth and final time in 1961. In that battle, Fulmer retained the title with another 15-round decision. Now let's return to the 1960 middleweight championship bout between Sugar Ray Robinson and Gene Fulmer here on ESPN Classic. There's the bell and they're out there again. Robinson on the right, Fulmer on the left. Fulmer has shown signs of picking up the pace the last two rounds. punches. Ray wants punching room. Open up at the combinations. Now, Fulmer, Fulmer is dropping those hands just a little bit. That could be dangerous.
Bomer is the aggressor, but Robinson is doing the scoring. Bomer's best have been to the body. They're crushing punches that are bound to take their toll as the fight goes on. Round is half over. Now Palmer is starting to throw them from back in the backfield. Robinson keeps them off with that jab. Fulmer with that right. punches. in California on the simplified five system. The winner of a round gets anywhere from one to five points. The loser gets nothing. Even rounds are marked by an X. The referee and two judges do the scoring. Robinson's uh, punches are the flashier, but Puma throws a crunching punch to the body. Now he's going for the head more than he did in the early rounds. seven half over. Former is doing better defensively now than he did in the last two rounds. to go in round seven. Well, he didn't defend that time. Notice that Robinson is fighting in flurries now. Fulmer grunted when he dug the body that time. Ten seconds to go in round seven. the bell, Serena. 
Robinson on the left, Fulmer on the right. but no knockdowns in the fight. Neither has been seriously hurt. Robinson is tiring a little. He's not getting away from Fulmer's rushes as he did earlier. That's only a surmise. He may have other ideas. Well, that was solid. And that. Here, 
One minute to go in round 11. Burma coming back, however. Now it's a pair sixer. Almost over. Three as Sugar Ray Robinson battles Gene Fulmer in December of 1960 for the middleweight championship on ESPN Plus. There's the bell. There have been no knockdowns. Robinson on the right, Fulmer on the left, both wearing white trunks.
Two minutes to go in this round, round 13. seconds to go in round 13. but don't forget that Fulmer is scoring heavily too. the 
bell ending round 14. Listen to the crowd. There have been no knockdowns. There's the bell. Champion five times, and they hadn't cheered for me. I'd have felt bad. 
Well, how do you feel about the decision now? Do you feel you won, or do you feel that uh, you're happy to get a draw? Well, I naturally felt that I won, but uh, that's what we have judges and referees for to call a decision, and that they thought a draw, why I will have to go along the way they thought. Well, Gene, may I say this? You're, uh, you're walking on a tightrope. This is the second draw decision in a title defense for you. Uh, it happened with Joey Ciardella last year. That's right, Don. Well, uh, does the return bout contract, I might ask Bob Jensen, your manager, what about the return bout contract? Does that cover a draw decision? No, it's just in case he loses while he had a return match. Oh, what do you think will happen now? Do you think, well, I think Robinson deserves another fight, don't you? Well, we'll see. I think he'll be running after us like he was, we were running after him before, so I don't think that he'll be getting a return match. I thought, personally, I thought Lawson displayed a great deal of, Green Sally there for about three or four rounds. He looked great, but I thought Dean won't reach nine rounds. Well, uh, uh, Marv, uh, what did you think about Robinson's condition? Did that surprise you? Well, he had an extra six weeks to train, and we knew he'd be in good condition. He's a good athlete. You can't take nothing away from him. He's a great fighter. And that was Dean Fulmer, the uh, still NBA middleweight champion of the world.